So section 1, 6, and they, what do they call us? Two-dimensional figures. Okay, so let's write that down. Two-dimensional. Put a dash in between there, don't they? Yeah. Two-dimensional figures. What do you think the next lesson is? Ah, good. Three-dimensional figures. But today we're just doing two. So they're just flat surfaces. They just have a width and a length. Okay, these different shapes that we're going to do. You can draw them on a nice two-dimensional piece of paper or a computer desk like we have right here or whatever. All right, so two-dimensional figures. First word we're going to talk about as far as a two-dimensional figure, because all these things I believe we're talking about today are all things called polygons. And that's what this crazy thing is. All right, what's that? Yeah, it doesn't have to be exactly like that, but just anything with a bunch of sides all connected, okay? So it doesn't have to look exactly like that. It doesn't have to be exactly that many sides. I don't really care, all right? But we call this thing a polygon. All right, let me look in the book to see exactly what it says, all right? Because I, I have my own little, you know, made-up definition, but they say it's this. It's a closed figure formed by a finite number of coplanar segments. How about that? Now it really clears things up, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, don't write it all down. Don't write it down. I'm just reading it off. So it's a closed figure formed by a finite number of coplanar segments called sides. Basically, it's this. If you have a bunch of line segments, okay, and they all connect at the ends, at the end points, right? We've, we've definitely talked about line segments, haven't we? So if you have line segments and they're all connected, okay, at each end point, all right, then I've got basically a polygon. What does that prefix poly mean? Many, right. And the gon kind of means angles in geometry. So many what? Angles. angles. And it does. It's got many angles, doesn't it? All right, so that's a polygon. It's got to be closed. You can't have these gaps in it, all right? There's no openings in it because every endpoint is connected to another endpoint. Everybody got that? Would you agree? Every one of these segments, the endpoints are connected to another endpoint of another segment? Yeah, absolutely. So that's basically a polygon. They get a little wordy sometimes in these definitions. I know some geometry teachers... They're really big on definitions, right? And they'll give you like 20 definitions, just like vocab class in geometry or in uh, English, right? And you know, you gotta you gotta write out the definitions, you know, letter for letter and all that. I think that's bogus because you never remember it. You, that doesn't real just because you memorize stuff doesn't mean that you really know what it mean. You know, it says. I'm more interested that you know what it is, how to use it, and all that kind of stuff than just memorizing a whole bunch of definitions. Yes. Because it's because the endpoint of that straight up and down line is not connected to another endpoint. They all have to be connected. And they have to be straight. And they got to be straight lines. Yeah. Well, a line is just straight automatically. Okay. We don't even have to say straight lines, but they have to be lines. They can't be curves. Okay. And and we will look in the book for some non polygons. But let's just talk about a couple things right here. Let's label this. I'll just this might be different than the book does, but that's right. C D E. Now, you know how we had a fancy symbol for um, a line, right? Put the little line over top with the arrows. We had a symbol for line segment. You just put the line without the arrows. And believe me, all year long, we're going to learn all these different um, uh, yeah, ways to label different pictures. And But there's really no fancy way to label a polygon. We just say polygon, right? Polygon. And what do you think we're going to do? We could start at any letter. It doesn't matter. Let's just start at A. It makes it a little easier. And you just list in order. Now, it doesn't matter what order. Well, let me say this. It doesn't matter which way you go around the polygon. They don't want you to go through the polygon. So if you start at A, you could either go to B and work your way around or start at A and go where? To F and work your way around. It doesn't make any difference. And So there's all kinds of different ways that you could call this thing. Right? I'll start at A and go A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let me give you a little sign before you go. Do the only soccer player? Oh, it's middle school, so I don't have that many middle school kids in here. Um, no, one six. It's um, there it is. Eleven to thirty-two. Page sixty-one, sixty-two. Eleven to thirty-two. Eleven to thirty-two. Yep. And again, if you forget or if you have to leave early, let's say you had to leave before you even got to this class, you can always go look at the YouTube 
you know, page, or you can um, go to Digital Lockers, right? I've got my whole lesson plan listed there, or you can read the email that I send at the beginning of the week. You know, so there's all kinds of ways you can learn what the assignment is for that day. All right, so I could call it um, Polygon A, B, C, D, E, F. I could have called it Polygon what? A, F, E, D, C, B. Or I could have started at D and called it Polygon what? D, C, B, A, F, E. You get the idea, right? So there's all kinds of different ways. That's just a little bit nicer, isn't it? Because it's nice alphabetical order. But that's what that polygon would be. Now look, it's made up of a bunch of these line segments. Remember I said they're made up of line segments? Each of those line segments is called the side of a polygon. Everybody see that? So all is, so how many sides does this polygon have? Six. It's got six sides. Good. Um, do you see the points where they all meet? See, each of these line segments has to meet at an endpoint. Do you see what these points are? We give it a fancy geometry name, and we call that a vertex. We'll be talking about vertex a lot throughout the whole, and sides as well. But we've already mentioned vertex before, haven't we? Remember we said this is many angles? So you could think of this being angle what? B, C, D, couldn't you? So that would be a vertex anyway, wouldn't it? So that's not brand new. And this would also be a side of the angle. Yeah, so it's all kind of, it's all coming back, right? With angles and rays and all that good stuff. All right, enough of that. Um, there's a bunch of pictures on page 56. I'm not going to draw them all out. But there are pages on 56 of, of examples of polygons and examples of non-polygons or not. They, call it, they just say they're not polygons. Let me just um, do a couple non-example. Which one? Which one's not a polygon? The bow tie thing. Okay. Well, if we, I probably did, I wasn't real specific on the definition, but it says um, it says the sides have a common endpoint. Oh, that have a common endpoint are non-collinear, and each side intersects exactly two other sides. So each side ex um, intersects exactly two other sides. So let's look at that bow tie thing. Looks something like this. Oops, like that and like that. Okay. So why is that not a polygon? Because look at this. See this segment from here all the way to here? Does it only hit at the endpoints? No, it's also intersected here, isn't it? So if it has three points of intersection, it's not a polygon. It can only have two points of intersection. Alex? Well, then they would just, each one of them would just be a polygon, right? Yep. So if this, if I was able to separate this, right, break it up into two triangles, well, this would be its own polygon, and this would be its own polygon, all right? And you're right. We call them triangles. We have different names for them as well. Let's talk about um, this real quick. Let's, let's make, uh, I'll just make one like this. Now, I'm trying to make sure that the endpoints do touch. I might not have been, yeah, I was pretty good, actually. All right, so let's, I'm going to copy that. Make it a little bit smaller, like that, okay? So there's a polygon, would you agree? Now, if you look at this, um, let's do red. If I started at any of these vertices, right? Remember, that's a plural for vertex. If I started at any of these vertices, let's just start right here. And if I was able to draw, and here's the word, to a non-consecutive vertice. Consecutive means one right after the other. That's consecutive. So if it's non-consecutive, so if I went to a consecutive vertex, oops, ran out of room on my little writing pad thing here. Let's try that one more time. If I started here, I went to there, that would be a consecutive vertex, wouldn't it? Because it's right next to this one. That would be consecutive. Which one would be non-consecutive? This one right there, okay? Everybody see that? So if I draw, and these are called diagonals. If I go from one vertex to a non-consecutive vertex, they're diagonals. If you look at this, actually, you know what? I was thinking of something else. Let's do this. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What if we did this? What if I took that and extended it like that? It's supposed to make a straight line right there. Does that make sense? Okay, so I extended that. Um, let's extend this. What's that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same side, right. But it just extends out. Watch this. I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second, why I'm doing it. Um, that looks about straight. Pretend that's, you know, one nice straight line right there. And what's another one? I could extend this one like that. 
I could extend this one like this. Yeah, let's give me some more room. Like that. All right, everybody see that? Have I extended all my sides? I think I did, didn't I? Now look at this. If if I made if I made them keep on going, they might even intersect each other. But look, none of these extensions, these red lines, none of them are inside my polygon, are they? They're all where? Outside the polygon. So if I extend each one of my sides to the polygon, those side extensions are all going to be outside the polygon. If that's true, we call this thing a convex polygon. Right? This is not like super, super important. But we will they'll, they'll mention it from time to time. It's not really that huge of a deal, though. Because if I take all my sides and I extend it, if I took this side, right, and I extended it out here and I extended it right here, those extensions would never be inside of here. Do you see that? All those lines, all those sides that I extended out, none of them are going to intersect inside of this polygon. So if that's true, I call it a convex polygon. Now let me draw another polygon that's a polygon, it, it's, but it's not convex. And let me make that white again. All right, so let's do this. Let's do this, this, and this. Okay? Look at that. That's still a polygon. Oops. Grab it right there. Okay. Now it's supposed to touch right here. Let's make it look a little bit more accurate. Nah, it's not. Anyway, you get the idea. It is supposed to touch here, okay? I'm not trying to throw you off. But look at this. What if I wanted to extend the sides of this one? Let's go yellow. Watch. If I extend this, that's still outside, isn't it? Well, that doesn't look very straight. Okay. If I extend that, that's still outside, right? And that looks like it's outside, right? If I extend this side... Right, goes like this. If I extend this one, so far so good, right? Everything's outside the polygon until I start doing what? Taking this side. Now look at this. If I extend it, where does it go through? It goes through it, doesn't it? And if I take this side right here, that goes through it as well. Drop it. So look. Do you see how the yellow went through the white polygon right there? Guess what? That means it's not convex, but we give that a name and we call it concave. Maybe in your science classes, you talk about lenses and glass and stuff. You talk about a convex lens and a concave lens. You ever do that? Look at your spoon. You ever, you ever, uh, you ever look at your spoon real close? If you look on one side, you see yourself right side up. If you flip it around and look at the other side, it actually turns you upside down. Isn't that interesting? Yeah? Yeah, try it. So one side is concave and one side is convex. Same with your glasses. If you look at your glasses, they're not flat, are they? They're curved. There's a, the concave part, the curve, the inside part, that's the concave. The outside where it goes out like that, that's convex, right? So that's, so we use that a lot. Go inside. See all that right there? That's inside of our polygon. See all that right there? That's inside of our polygon. That makes it into a concave polygon. Example 1B. No, nah, yeah, but we're no, we're extending the sides. Okay, you can't just yeah, you're not just going from one point to another. You're extending the sides. You're taking the sides and s stretching them out. Okay, if you take all those sides, stretch them out, it's not gonna go in there. Look at part A though. Part A is concave though, isn't it? Because there's a couple sides there. If I extended it, it would go through. When I think of concave, I think of going into a cave. Right? Look. See, I'm walking, 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 and look, that's kind of like inside a cave. Just how it bends in like that. If it bends in like that, that's kind of like going into a cave. So I think concave. Everybody see that? Look at all these other ones. Every one of these, you're not going into a cave, are you? Everything's pointing out. You see it? Everything's pointing out with convex, but with concave, you got this side right here and this side pointing in towards the um, polygon. So that's concave. Yeah, come here. No, it's not going to be the same exact shape. I mean, there's a shape. Look on page 57, letter A. It says example 1. Um, that's concave. It's not the same exact shape, but it's still concave. Because if you take one of the sides and extend it, it's going to go through, you know, somewhere in, inside of that polygon. That makes it concave. Let's not take any more time on that because really, 
It's not really that important in the grand scheme of things. All right. Um, I do want to talk about a regular polygon. Let's write that down. Regular polygon. Well, I didn't know those were irregular. But there is something special about a regular polygon. And I'll tell you what. I'm going to... Uh, I've got a couple regular polygons over here I can use. That's regular. So is that one. So is that one and that one. I'm going to grab all of those. Well, we don't call the other ones irregular. We just call these regular. It's really confusing. Why? That's all right. Don't be confused. It's all right. Let's just take one of these. Now look at this thing right here. It's a nice triangle. Right? Now, it's a polygon. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, but it's a regular polygon because of this reason. Let me show you. What do those little tick mark things mean? All sides the sides are equal. Okay, everything with one tick mark means those sides are equal. So, a regular polygon, you still have that written at the top? A regular polygon has all the sides equal, and not just that, but what do you think? All the angles equal as well. Okay, so if all the angles are equal and all the sides are equal to each other, then it's a regular polygon. Everybody see that? All right. So let's bring this one up, make this a little bit bigger. So if this is a regular polygon, and I, I drew these before. I had them already prepared and stuff, okay? So I promise you, all the sides are equal and all the angles are equal. you got to take my word for it a little bit. But if you wanted to measure it, you could figure it out. But look, every single one of these angles are equal to each other. And what else is true? Not just the angles, but what? The sides, right? The sides are all equal to each other as well, all right? So if that side is 5, what are all the other sides equal to? 5. Okay, if this angle is, well, I don't know. I shouldn't say that because that will get me in trouble because I might get the numbers wrong. But anyway, there we go because we'll figure out what those angles are. Maybe not in this lesson. Yeah, we're not going to do it in this lesson, but we'll do it in another lesson, another chapter. Okay, so all the sides are equal. All the angles are equal. That's basically all you need to know right now anyway for a regular polygon. In another chapter, when I said we we're going to talk about this stuff, we're going to get into a lot more detail about it. And we're going to find, man, we're going to find all kinds of crazy stuff about this. All right, but this is just beginning. All right, we're just starting, just laying the groundwork is all we're doing right now. All right, so these are regular. Now, how many sides does this thing have? It's got five. Okay, what would a, a regular four sided figure be called? A square. a square, exactly right. Okay, because a square. And you could call it a rectangle. And again, we have another chapter that we talk about this stuff. But a rectangle wouldn't be regular, though. But the definition, here's just a little sneak preview. The definition of a rectangle is a four-sided figure with all four right angles. So is a square a four-sided figure? Yes. Does a square, wait a minute, let me finish. Does a square have all four right angles? Yes, it does. So the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral four-sided figure with four right angles. <coughs> Woo, excuse me. Got that recorded good. I can hear myself sneeze. <laughs> All right. So, um, Gad Brooke, what were you going to say? Uh, I was just going to say, isn't like the definition of a rectangle square? Something like that. It's like well, the definition of a square, yeah, you're right. The definition of a square is a rectangle with all four equal sides. So a square is a rectangle. Why is it a rectangle? Because a rectangle has four right angles. So does a square, right? So a square is a rectangle, but it's a rectangle. It's a special kind of a rectangle. It's a rectangle that has four equal sides. Because not every rectangle has four equal sides, does it? But a square does. So a square is a rectangle. Is every rectangle a square, though? No. But every square, talk to me, is a rectangle. Make sense? So watch. Let's go through this. Here's four sides. Here's five sides. This is what? Six sides, right? I skipped seven, but this is what? Eight sides. A lot of these have names. So let's just write down some of the names. Now, can you have a polygon with two sides? No. No. All right, because they would never connect, would they? And they, they would be open. It would look like an angle, wouldn't it? Yeah, but you couldn't. Yeah. Right, you couldn't do that because you got to be lines. They got to be lines, okay? So watch. If I have, um, let's do this. Let's write down this. The number of sides and then the name. 
All right, so if I have three sides, it's got a name. So what's a polygon with three sides called? It's a triangle, yeah. Everybody knows that, right? What if you had four sides? Some people would say square, but yeah, quadrilateral, because you could have a four-sided figure that's not a square. Wouldn't you agree? So we call it a quadrilateral. Lateral means sides. Quad means what? Four. Right. Every one of these names has a prefix, and it means that number of sides. Five is a, what do you think? Pentagon. We all know about Pentagon, right? Pentagon in D.C. Remember? One of the planes flew into it, so it was on the news quite a bit. Anybody watch any of that news on 9-11 and all the stories and stuff like that? Do you know yeah. they read off all the names? That yes. It took like two hours. And they did stuff in between the reading of yeah. the names and stuff. Yeah, that was pretty amazing, though. I mean, it got me choked up a couple times, especially when the little kids were there and they, you know, and, you know, the, like the mom was pregnant or something, you know, with the kid and the dad died. And, man, that just it did. It kind of tore me up a little bit. Anyway, what do we got? Six. What's the prefix for six? Hexagon. Boy, I remember it like it was yesterday. Seven. Now, seven you don't really see that often. That's why I didn't even have a picture of seven sides. But um, sometimes they call it, what does this book call it? Sept or heptagon. I've heard it's septagon. But I used to teach out of a book that just called it a seven-gon. All right, seven and then dash gone, all right? But you hardly ever hear anybody talk about a heptagon. I've never heard anybody talk about a heptagon. Hexagon, though. Uh, look at this, pentagon, hexagon. At least the old school soccer balls, if you ever looked at them, you, you ever see the old soccer balls where you see the different shapes on there? Well, they were pentagons and hexagons. It was a combination of pentagon and hexagon. And that way, with those angles that are formed and stuff, you can make a complete perfect sphere out of that which is kind of interesting. So if you look at a soccer ball, you'll see pentagons and hexagons. Right? Eight something you probably see almost every single day. And what would it be? Stop sign. That's right. Okay. Is it octo or octa? I always forget. Octa. It's a. Uh. Octagon. Nine is probably not that familiar, but it's nonagon. Non. N-O-N. Agon. Ten's pretty popular. It's called a decagon. Decagon. Now they do put 11 and 12. I never heard anybody refer to these. <laughs> Actually, I stick 12 in there. I've never heard anybody refer to these uh, names because eventually you got to stop. You can't give names to any. I'll just write it down just for fun, all right? No, I, I won't have you memorize this. Hendecagon. <laughs> Decagon. It's pretty crazy. I've never heard of that until I taught this from here. 12. I heard. I've, I have heard of this. It's a dodecagon. Do, decagon. So those prefixes must mean something. The hen and the do. All right, I don't know what. You can look it up if you want. And there you go. Now, if you go anymore, you know, eventually they got to quit giving them names. All right, so like if you had 27 sides, they don't have some special name for 27. You would just call it what? 27 gon. <laughs> or you just call it a polygon with 27 sides. That's what I would do, okay? Just say it's a polygon with 27 sides. I wouldn't even try to even give it a name. All right, it gets a little ridiculous after a while, wouldn't you agree? All right, enough of that. Let's see what else we got here. Ooh, when do we get out of here? 13. Thursday, 13. Okay, we can do some of these real quick. Uh, again, this is we're going to do a lot more with this later on, but um, for right now, this is what we're going to do. Let me um, bring these back again. Get rid of these. Let's use the triangle. And it doesn't even have to be a regular look. I'm going to squeeze it in just so it doesn't look like a regular. What we're going to do is talk about perimeter and talk about area. Perimeter is kind of easy, actually. You don't really have to memorize a whole lot of stuff, except until we get to a circle, which we'll do in here in a second. If I wanted to find the perimeter of this thing, let's say that was 5, and that was 5, and that was 3. The perimeter is just, this is how I say it, it's just the distance around. If you just remember those two words, it's the distance around. So if I wanted to walk around this thing, how far would I walk? What do you think? Tell me. Do the math. 13. 13, right. So if I ask for the perimeter, I don't have to learn some fancy formula, do I? All I got to do is look at it and say, what does perimeter mean? It means the distance around the thing. So let's just add up all the sides, right? That's what perimeter basically is. Um, they try and put formulas here. Look. P equals B plus C plus D. I think that's dumb, all right? Because it's like 
Oh, I gotta memorize that? No. All you gotta do is remember that it's the distance around an object. Okay, so what's the math here? It's 5 plus 5 plus 3, which is 13. So that's the perimeter of an object. That works for any polygon, no matter how many sides you have. You just add up all the sides, right? You don't have to learn different equations for it or different formulas for it. Just know that it's the distance around a subject or a, a, a shape. Subject, where I get that from? Let's do another shape. Let's see. Yeah, I got circles here, right there. And there's a nice, pretty circle. And we're going to find the perimeter of this circle. The problem is, on a circle, I don't have a bunch of sides, do I? But what do they, and you've learned this before, so this is not new to you. What do they give you on a circle a lot of times? What would that be? Yeah, that would be the radius of the circle. Okay, radius. It's from the center of the circle to any point on the circle. That's the radius. Okay, we say this point is on the circle. This point is in the circle. But that's the center, all right? That point right there is the center of the circle. This point right here is on the circle. That distance is exactly the same. Now watch this. If I can remember how to do this, let's see if I can. Um, do I use the line tool? No, let's try. Oh, man, I remembered how to do this last year, and now I forgot. Click something. No, that's not it. There's one thing I can do to kind of like rotate it and keep it right there. I'll have to play with it. I figured it out last year, and I was so excited about it. <laughs> um, but I forget how to do it now. There's something that you push to, to make it rotate around that thing right there. Um, let me just try real quick here. Uh, forget it. I'm going to take too long doing that. I'll work it out some other time. But watch. If I went from here to this point on the circle, is that any different? Nope, same distance, isn't it? All around the circle. Now, on perimeter, for circles, for some reason, they're a little more special, so they give them different names. So instead of calling it the perimeter of a circle, you've heard this before, they call it the circumference of a circle. It just means the perimeter. It's the same exact thing. It just means the distance around this circle. Now, we don't have any sides. It's not a polygon, is it? Because it's curved. It's not, they're not lines. Okay, so it's not so we can't use the same formula, but they do give us a formula, and this one you definitely need a formula. Do you remember what this is? Two pi r. Now, if I took this radius and I extended it through the center all the way to the other end of the circle, right there, what is that big line I just drew? That's the diameter of the circle. So tell me something about the radius and the diameter. The radius half of the diameter, or you could say the diameter is two times the radius. So I could say instead of 2 pi r, I could just say pi what? D, right. Because look, there's your 2r right there, isn't it? Twice the radius is one diameter. So you could use either one of these. Doesn't make any difference. I kind of like 2 pi r because a lot of times they tell you the radius and you just plug it into that. We good with that? All right. Um, let's just do area right now. So let's go back to a rectangle. What if you had a rectangle, or actually like this, and I want to find the area of this. I'm not going to get it really into this, but if you broke it up, let's say, let's say this was like seven across and three up and down, right? And you want to find the area. You want to find out how many squares, right? How many perfect squares will fit inside this rectangle? Do you remember the formula? Length times width. Okay, so that's easy. What's the area of this thing? It's 21. What would the perimeter of this thing be? This is 7. This is 7. This is 3. This is 3. 14 and 6 is 20. Right. Good. Everybody with me on that? All right. Um, let's do, let's, since we got a circle right here, let's do area of a circle because we're running out of time. The area of a circle, it's not 2 pi r, but you have some of the same number, or actually all the same letters and numbers, but it's what? Pi r squared. Good. So you learned that back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. So area is pi r squared, circumference is 2 pi r. Keep them straight. A lot of people, you can see where you can get confused, right? But area is always squared. Why? Because you want to find out how many squares can you fit inside of there. So area is always squared, r squared. Everybody got that? Can you remember that? Okay. Let's do, let's do one. Pi d is also the circumference. Let's do one more. Let's do the triangle. Oh, let's see. Do I, 
Yeah, good. I still got those triangles there. Let's do... Actually, let's do this real quick. Uh, watch this. Following students, please come Instead to of calling it length times call width, sometimes we call it height Chris and base. Rivera, so Reagan, look at this. Duken, Trey, and Maya this is a triangle, isn't it? So the triangle Alex is how Lee, much of the whole entire Chris rectangle. It's half of it. So the area Justin is Rushmore. one half. Instead of calling it length and width, office. we can call it what? Thank base you. and height. For a triangle, for some reason, they call it base and height. So that's what we do. So area is one half the base times the height. That's of a what? That's the area of a triangle. That's the symbol for triangle. I think we covered everything. Um, let's give you some problems to do, and that'll be it. It's um, 11 to 32. You're doing 61, 62, 11 to 32. Eleven to thirty-two. This is page right there. Page sixty-one to sixty-two. Everybody got that? All right. Have fun with that.